Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today we're going to tackle removing the crankshaft. Uh, but before we do that, we'll, we'll take a few measurements and make sure this is okay to go back in for the built motor. Stick around. Alright, so uh, I guess first thing we'll talk a little bit about um, why we uh, we have to pull the crankshaft. Uh, the, the first reason is we're uh, getting rid of these uh, weaker um, main bolts, main cap bolts, the stock ones in, in place of an ARP variant. So that's uh, number one reason. <laughs> Uh, number two reason is we have to bore the cylinders and to do that we need see if I can get a little shot of inside the cylinders here um, you need room you need room inside the bottom of the cylinders because the crunch uh, the, to bore it properly and hone it the tooling has to be able to pass completely through the uh, the very bottom of the cylinder bore so uh, you have to have the crankshaft out of the way for that uh, since this is an aluminum block and you uh, if you installed different fasteners with a different clamping load uh, what you in effect do is you, you contort the whole block a little bit differently and, and you can pull the cylinder walls like you know one or two thousands out of round here and there so that's why it's ideal when you do these uh, you don't just try to go with uh, stocks uh, you know cylinder bore which is 95.5 millimeter you know you'll step up to 96 millimeter that way it gives you that extra half millimeter for it you know the contorted uh, cylinder bores now first thing we want to do here before we even loosen any bolts is we're gonna check uh, the specs I'll, I'll list on the video here. It should be 3.9 thousandths to 11.8 thousandths of in-play. Uh, like I said, I, I'll overlay it on this video. Let's see if you can hear the, the little bit of in-play. I'll measure it too, but see if you can hear it. You can hear it uh, hitting back and forth. So what we'll do, we'll set up, now you can do this two different ways. Um, you can set up on the block, if you want to bolt a piece of steel to the block uh, to magnetize your base to, and then you indicate on this little flat surface here, and you pull it in and out. You can check it that way, or you can do it the way I'm doing it. I like to just put the... Uh, indicator directly on the crankshaft and just push it here make sure it's solid now you zero it out alright let's see what we get a little under five thousandths so go back back to zero just a little under just that's right at zero And that's probably, if we're going down to the tenths, uh, it's probably something like 4.7 thousandths, which is within spec. So we know we're good to go there. Before we take, start taking this down, uh, what does this is uh, there are thrust washers in here. The thrust, thrust washers, uh, they do multiple things. Um, it corrects in play, it, it uh, lessens or increases in play, which is what we just measured. And it also pushes the, the lobe, the lobe uh, crankshaft lobe center lines 
it pushes them one way or another to be center line of the lobe to center line of each individual bore and all that's like really critical it's a uh, E14 Torx and according to the FSM for uh, loosening these bolts uh, you want to start from the outside and move inward and guys Don't use an impact for any of this. Please don't. remove them all. The reason you need to remove them all is because the next step calls for uh, bolts to run down in the sides here to help pick up the lower cylinder block. And if you have any of these threads that aren't all the way loosened and they're kind of hanging in there a little bit and you pick up with these uh, these lift bolts, um, you're gonna damage. You're gonna damage the threads in one of these if this is still, you know, engaged a little bit. So, something you uh, want to be aware of. All right, and these are. There's one, two, three, four, and they're like uh, M8 by 1.25. All right, so what you do, you just take the bolts nearest, because these threads are the same, just take the bolts nearest, thread, the, thread it in these four uh, lift holes, and just same over here, and make, same thing with these bolts here, make sure, make sure none of these bolts Make sure they're all the way loose. You don't want any of them. See, like that one had was a little bit had a little bit of thread engagement. I'll we'll use my little stubby one that way I don't over tighten them. And you just kind of walk around. You can already hear it. Just don't try to go too much at a time. Really gentle with these. Yeah, it's all the way loose now. Just be re really gentle. Some might want to stick to the crankshaft. Um, some might want to stick to this. So just when you pick up, just be real easy with it. And show you here the main, the main bearings. So you can see they all look pretty decent. The only one with a slight little bit of wear is that uh is the rear one. So uh we might can once we bolt all this back together uh without the crankshaft in, we can probably go ahead and check the clearances on these. That rear one could have been a little on the tight side. So yeah, this is it here. We with all the bearings stayed in this side, so we're good with that for now. 
There's something else we can do now as well. Just some regular engine oil. And I'm going to pour a little bit on these main journals. Ooh, not that much. Just a little bit on these journals. Um, yeah. Yeah, spin it here without any kind of wear happening. Okay, we got a little oil film. What we want to do now, we want to get our indicator set up to where we can check these ends and these uh and these journals as well. This is zero and this is zero. If these are both zero turning completely around then we can check these and and see if they're out of round. You would call that run out, you know. A run out would be when things are no longer perfectly center line, like the crankshaft could be a little bit bent one way or the other. And there's there's a tolerance for that too. I'll I'll list that. We'll go ahead and get our indicator set up and uh Get some measurements here. All right, stick the magnet. Get our zero here. Zero, I am. So now what we want to do. Let me get you a little closer to the indicator here. We have our top for uh, zero, basically, or for twelve o'clock. We'll spin this around and watch and see how far out, if any. It looks like. Within, uh, looks like it's within half a thousand. So let me try again here. Let me try to get a little more accurate here. All right, try again. Minus a couple tenths, plus maybe one tenth. So maybe a few tenths. So less than half a thousandth out, plus like one tenth, one or two tenths. Yeah, it's a couple tenths out. Yeah, we're maybe a couple tenths out. This one is within two tenths. So all of them were were then two or three tenths. That's tenths of a thousand. So, um, like I said, I'll display the uh, I'll display the specs. Um, I'll over, overlay it on the video. Machine shop will probably have it zeroed on this lobe or this journal and that journal, and let it free spin from there. But. I mean, you're not going to get much different. I mean, a one or two tenths difference, which is still well within, well within spec. All the bearings stayed on the bottom. I'll just turn this up. Just turn the crank up on the flex plate, and one thrush bearing or thrust bearing and the second one here I have one bag for the rear thrust bearing and see one side does not have grooves one side does the, the oil grooves go to the outside of the engine so we have our rear one in our bag and the same thing with our front one it's the same way Smooth side goes towards the where the journal sits. Oil grooves go to the outside. Yeah, one last little step here. If you're uh, having the block machine, you gotta remove these uh, 
oil squirters. Get them out of the way of the um, <clears throat> for the machine shop. I'm using a uh, 10 millimeter 12 point for these. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And these were these are. Uh, while the engine's running, these are um, with spray oil onto the bottom of the pistons. So yeah, we're pretty much uh, good to go to to have all this machined. We'll just need to uh, wait for the ARP uh, main stud kit to get here, um, along with uh, the oversized pistons, and uh, yeah, then we'll torque down the lower block to the block itself. Um, we'll leave the we'll leave the bearings in it. Until next time, thanks for watching.